Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Spellweaver. My name is Boltor, and I hope I fixed the microphone. My microphone's been quiet since I switched them, but I think I fixed it. Hopefully I did. Anyway, on to the video. So today we had ourselves a pretty big balancing patch. We got a few... Well, we got one new card and a couple of cards that are cha so changed that they're practically new cards. So how I want to do it is we're going to go over the quick stuff, the ones that have had like a stat change, a point here or there, you know, you know what I mean? We're going to do the quick ones quick, we're going to go into the ones that are kind of a little bit more, maybe they had something changed about their effect or something changed about their abilities or whatnot, and then there are two cards that we're going to go into kind of an in-depth discussion about. One of them's new, and one of them is practically new. So we'll see. First things first, refer a friend. If you aren't playing Spellweaver yet and you're watching my channel, I don't know why you are, but hey, welcome. Hey, how's it going? Good? Good. It, good for me, too. <laughs> so, you use this referral code when you start or when you start playing Spellweaver, and you get a 75,000 gold for free, right off the bat, just for entering your referral code. I'm not 100% sure how it works, but I, I'm assuming you get like the code option to enter it when you start the game. But if anyone wants to use my code, H3YCM9, I'll leave it right here so you can pause, write it down, or whatever. I'll, you know, 75,000 gold for you, 10,000 for me every time you level up, and I get a little bit from whatever you make a purchase, although I don't expect a lot of people to be making purchases. So, yeah, I mean, it helps you out. It kind of, it, you know, it helps me out. I have absolutely no problem with it. So if you want to use my refer a friend code, it's right there. You can see it all right here. I'm circling it. Anyway cool system the steam i'm not going to go into the steam cards because i never really got into them I, I don't really get into them i have like two and i have like 20 steam games and only have like two cards so i don't really know how that works and i just honestly don't necessarily care all that much so first things first we go to nature who have had two rather interesting card changes primarily summoner druid Summoner Druid was a 1-2, now it's a 1-1. One, one. Really doesn't change a whole lot of what it dies to. It died to Kanashi's Tombs, it still does. Died to Assassinate, still does. The only thing, the only three things that it really changes now are it dies to Plague Vermin, it dies to Disciple of Zash, and it dies to a one-level Consumed Spirit, which you can cast on turn two. Consumed, I mean, you need another creature in play, but Consumed Spirit still kills it. Now, it's that that's a good thing, but really, it help it really only helps corruption counter um, nature and corruption already countered nature. Corruption got really buffed in this patch, even though they didn't do a single thing to corruption. But so this is really just kind of a meh change, not the change I expected when people were talking about changing Summoner Druid. I had really expected my or something about. Like, maybe changing its effect, maybe changing its energy. It's a 1-1 one, one now instead of a 1-2. Makes it easier to kill. So, I mean, there's that. The other one that got changed, and this is kind of more of a big deal, is Haldiri Rider. Was a 3-3, three, three, now it's a 3-2. Dies to Elf Warrior, dies to Library Guards. Library Guards, which is played everywhere and is a mana cheaper. It dies to Noxious Fumes. It dies to an easier Consumed Spirit than it did before. So... One of the best cards in nature dies a little easier. Not super easier, but still easier. The big thing is it now gets it now trades with library guards. Library guards, like I said, sees play in everything that plays wisdom. So because of that, easier to take down. Elves are a little less oppressive, which I'm perfectly fine with. Moving on now, we go to rage. Two cards in rage were changed. The first one was Flameborn Incarnate. It's now two levels instead of just one level. It's, I mean, it's still good. It'll probably still see play. It's just a turn slower. Was this necessary? I don't think so. Is it going to make the card unplayable? Some people are calling that it is. I don't really see it. You're going to go to two levels in Rage anyway, even if you're playing Mono Rage. It's, it still gives you the ability to invest all your mana for damage, which is something that Rage did, doesn't have otherwise. It's still a good card, still going to be played. The big, big change to, or to Rage, Burning Rage. Two mana, one level, same cost. It still gives you all these same effects, but it, the damage is changed. At the end of your turn, Burning Rage deals one damage, 
to you for each card in your hand above four. So if you have five cards in hand, it deals one, six cards in hand, it deals two, seven cards in hand, it deals three. So the days of playing against a mid-range rage or kind of like an aggressive rage deck where your opponent has like eight cards in hand because they just keep throwing spells at you is probably going to be gone. It's still playable. It's still a good card because you're perfectly fine as a rage deck, especially if you're vomiting guys on board every turn. If you're a rage deck and you have five cards in hand, you're only taking one damage, you're perfectly fine with that. You know what I mean? And so it'll require a little bit more thinking to play this card. It'll require a little bit more strategy. You know, I can't, I could play this spell, but it's going to draw me two cards. I could play this. It's going to draw me a card. I'm going to take this much damage. It kind of it fits the flavor a little bit more because it burns you a bit more, but it also has a way of balancing out to where you can actually negate the burn. But to negate the burn, you have to play cards or play creatures because you play spells, you just, they just cycle. So it's not as big a deal as some people are saying. I actually really like it. I think it's still going to be played. Now we have, I believe, oh, we have two order cards. First off, Hermelian Hand of Justice. Tireless March is now two order levels as opposed to order and a generic. Nothing else has changed. This is kind of a big deal because it makes it harder for Hermelian Elves to just go off. They can't just play, you know, into nature and then drop the order and swing. They have to kind of invest a little bit more in the ability, which is fine. I don't think it's nerfed into the ground. Will it be as strong? No. But a lot of things have happened to make Hermelian Elves not as strong, which is good because I wasn't a huge fan of playing against Hermelian Elves, especially with Path of Transcendence, which we'll talk about in a minute. The next card they got tweaked, Angelic Song. Enemies can't attack allied creatures. The start of the turn, destroy Angelic Song and draw a card. So, it cycles. The big thing about Angelic Song now is it basically says for the next, for your, your opponent's next combat, play Magic the Gathering. <laughs> it basically says that your opponent can only attack your face, which sounds bad in theory, but when you think about the fact that playing creatures out and your opponent interacting with those creatures, choosing how to how to attack, to block, and push through certain creatures. You take that ability away from them. Every creature they want to attack with is susceptible to you declaring how you want the blocks to go. You controlling how combat ends, which is actually kind of a big deal. If you have enough creatures and your opponent really can't guarantee any sort of damage through, they probably won't attack, and Angelic Song keeps its effect. If your opponent chooses to skip an attack because you have creatures in play that could, you know, potentially block or outblock, I guess you could call it, your opponent's attack, then Angelic Song prevented your opponent from attacking for a turn, and it maintained its its same effect. You know what I mean? So, pretty happy with this card. It does allow you to interact more with OT heal, one turn heal, not OT heal. <laughs> And it means that one turn heal is probably going to have to start playing more creatures, which makes it more interactable, which makes it less, I'm going to sit here for 40 minutes and lose the game. You know what I mean? And the last one that was tweaked, oh, I believe, is, there it is, Path of Transcendence. The end of the turn, put a creature under Path of Transcendence. Stats, cost, and everything haven't changed. The one leaves the field, return all creatures under the Might Emblem, that, or under the field under its control. Sacrifice path, draw a card. Use this power only during your turn. You can't sacrifice at the end of your opponent's turn and then attack. Another thing that weakens Hermelian Elves. The big thing about this is that they specified in the patch notes that Path of Transcendence will put the creatures into play ready. They won't be exhausted. They will be able to attack, I believe, as long as they don't have summoning sickness which I don't think they will. They will be ready. They will not be exhausted, which is the big thing. So, it changes up Hermelian Elves, but like I said, a lot of things actually changed Hermelian Elves. Now, Shield Bash is the new card. It's an order card, but we'll get to Shield Bash when, at the end of the video. I wanted to talk about the changes to uh, Dominion, which will actually lead me into one of the cards I wanted to talk about. First big change to Dominion is another change to Powerlust Incarnate. Okay, 
Two mana instead of three, still one level. Powerless Incarnate's attack and health are equal to half the number of mana crystals rounded up. So think of the original one, original Powerless Incarnate, but half the stats. So if you have three mana, it would be a 2-2. Two, two. If you have four mana, it'll be a 2-2. Two, two. Five mana, it'll be a 3-3 three, because three, it is rounded up. So it kind of gets the uh, attack early, but it does kind of stay there for a turn. Powerless Incarnate speed is equal to your Dominion level, so it's the same Powerless Incarnate as it was, it's a mana cheaper, but its attack has literally been cut in half. Attack and health have literally been cut in half. And there's another, there was another card, wasn't there? I mean, I know Drela is the big one that we're going to talk about, but I feel like, no, not Wisdom Order, yes, corrupt, er, alright. So, first things for, or next, Drela. Drela Ruthless Suppressor. I believe her stats and her costs have remained the same. I know her stats have. She was a 2-speed 3-4. I believe her cost and everything is still the same. When Drayla enters the field, look at the enemy hero's hand and select a non-creature card from it. If you do, they discard it and that person draws a card. Whenever an enemy creature is put on field, pay 3 mana. If you do, put a weakness emblem on that creature. Okay. There's a lot to talk about here, so I'm actually going to try and be quick about it because I've said on the forums already that I could go on and on and on it on about this card but i really just want to give you guys kind of the cliff notes of my thoughts one the big thing non-creature card we're going to say that again non-creature card what does that mean it means you can target shrines with her discard you can hit skill shrines if your opponent is playing multi-aspect you can hit that one aspect they have in their hand like maybe they're playing nature corruption and they've got nothing but nature creatures in hand you see that one cor or nothing but corruption shrines in hand or cards in hand corruption cards in hand can't talk today. They discard that one corruption, suddenly their whole hand is dead. Sure, they could Divine Offering, they could hope to draw it, but if they don't, they whiff, it can be such a huge tempo swing, this card. People are like, well, why does, oh yeah, she's got a discard effect, whoop de doo People don't understand, they seem to understand, non-creature card. Shrines, shrines, spells, artifacts, shrines. This is the only creature, any card in the game that allows you to target shrines in your opponent's hand. Uh, mind extortions, artifact or spell. Where is where is it? Temptress of Deceit, non shrine card. They all hit different things, but she's the only one that can hit shrines. This is kind of the closest thing we have to land destruction or shrine or mana manipulation or whatnot of your opponent in the game. I don't know if you can hear my beagle, but he's started howling. That means it's dinner time. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, it cycles the card. They, if they discard, they draw again. But the fact that you can target shrines... Imagine being able to prevent your opponent from having a skill shrine. Prevent them from having that Cathedral of Night. Prevent them from having that Sanctum of the Void. Preventing them from having that Dragon Shrine. Preventing them from having that Elf Sanctuary. Think about that, and then just think about adding it to a 3-4 body. That also has another effect. Now, I don't see this effect doing a whole lot. I love it, but and I see it ha having much more of an effect in kind of mid-range and control decks. People are like, oh, she's not an aggressive card. Yeah, well, she's not, never was an aggressive card. Oh, she could remove blockers. Yeah, so. What people don't seem to realize about Drela is that she's a lot like another card we have, only better. She reminds me of a combination of Zyara, Sovereign of Souls, and Necromatic Cult. The only issue being that Zyara does it to both sides of the field. Drela can do it only to your opponent, not to mention there's an interaction with Wind Seeking Mutant, but we're not going to talk about him. <laughs> I know it costs three mana to do, but if you play her, when you've got a mountain of mana to do or to use and nothing to do with it, like in the late game of a control deck, then all of a sudden everything that your opponent plays is minus one, minus one. You know what I mean? And it's Dominion. Dominion likes having a lot of mana. And right now the only thing that they have to do with all that a lot of mana is by pl is to play Advanced Espina's hero ability. Not that big of a deal. So... Drail is the kind of thing that comes down during the mid game, maybe mid to late game, and kind of just sits there and sits back. She sits on her throne, you know, doesn't really care what goes on, sits in the back row, just kind of says, all right, there's stuff going on. I don't really care. And then later on, maybe you squeeze in a little bit of her ability here. You know, you've got three mana left over, your opponent plays a creature. Boom. 
opponent plays, and then he was just kind of like, ah, you know what? I've got an assassinate in hand. I've got some instants in hand. Let's just let them. I'll just pass and let them do it. Opponent plays another creature. Boom, weakened. Opponent plays another creature. Boom, weakened. All of a sudden, she's starting to build and build and build value. I think Corruption Dominion could at least be a viable deck. I know it was kind of here and there, but I think now it's even more viable, especially since Corruption is so much stronger. And, you know, I really, really, really love what they did with this card. Is she going to be the best card in the game? No. She's definitely not going to be pre-nerf Karthas. But, who knows, maybe people will start playing more Karthas because they have to kill Drayla, who is, in, in, admittedly, hard to kill. For life is hard to deal with, especially if she's sitting in the back row going, you know, come at me. Again, there are co co com bleh. Jeez, I cannot speak today. There are a combination of corruption. I kept saying combination corruption, and they kept getting crossed. <laughs> there are combinations of cards, especially in corruption, that can deal with her, but that's still two cr cards going into one card. I love the new Drela. I really do. But that's just my two cents. I think she's really good. A lot of people disagree with me. Now... The new card we got is 2 mana, 1 level. It replaces Militia, which is, as you guys can see... Oops, okay, so it's right here. Used to be you could there was a card in the game a lot like Zombie Legionnaire that spawned by a token maker, but you can also play a hard copy of it. It doesn't really necessarily matter. Cor militia's play, paying 1 mana for Militia was terrible, especially since there's a hero power that does the same thing. So we got Shield Bash instead. Play Shield Bash only on an allied attacking creature, only after your opponent has finished declaring blockers. All creatures engaged in combat with that creature have zero attack until end of turn draw card. So it cycles. Cool. Cycling is always nice. Basically what it does is it lets you kill... The, well, can't, you could kill a creature, but it basically says, no, this creature's, you're not going to kill this creature this turn in combat. This creature's not dying in combat. So it lets you trade up, it lets you trade better, it lets you go, you know, kind of be like, oh, surprise, a lot of the way, a, a lot the way Touch of Light does. I love combat tricks, I've always loved combat tricks in all the card games I've played, and this is just another combat trick. And I love how Order, aside from Ambushing Strike in Nature, Order seems to have all the combat tricks. And I love it. Very flavorful for soldiers. Cool card probably goes in an in order, kind of an aggressive order deck. There's that mono order deck that Johto played for a while. He got like top 10, or maybe he got number one, I can't remember, in the in the rankings with it, using just basic um, Alexa, wasn't even Hermelian. So it's an interesting card, and I'm very happy that we have it. And it just, it's kind of, it reminds me a lot, and I know I'm not you know, being too um, special here. But it reminds me a lot of Disarm. Same mana cost, same investment, and but it, it also cycles. So instead of doing two, it to two enemies, it just does it to one. But it also has the added benefit of all in creatures engaged in combat with that creature. So if you're swinging with a huge creature, call it a 6-6, six, six, maybe Antriel, and it, then someone triple blocks, boom, shield bash. All three of those creatures have no attack. So Antriel just kind of gets to eat them all up, even though angels don't eat people. Well, maybe they do. I don't know. I don't know their life. <laughs> so I want to keep this video rather quick because, A, I don't have time to invest, and, B, I'm sure you guys are tired of me rambling already. So is there anything else I missed? Let me double check your other... Oh, guards, guards isn't working, but it'll be hot fixed here soon. Card balance changes. We talked about that. Player referral we talked about. Translations and Steam cards. I said I'm not dealing with the Steam cards. Deary Rider, Flameborn, Drela, Powerlust, Powerlust, Hermelian, Path of Transcendence, Angelic Song, Shield Bash. Oh, Silverblade Warrior is now, Shadow Step Assass Assassin are now uncommon. Pain Spike, Power Seeker, and Angel Blessed Knight are now common. Really only affects uh, Trials, I believe, so uh, not a huge deal. So that's today's balancing patch. I think it was a good patch. Um, I know I'm going to be playing a lot of Corruption <laughs> for the next little bit. Uh, I am going to be tinkering with Dominion Corruption Control using Drela and just basically really good Corruption cards. I do like the the idea of Drela combined with Necromatic Cult and just those two kind of going at it on the board, manipulating the board and everything. Obviously I'm going to be playing Wind Seeking Mutants, but we'll see what happens. Alright? I might be doing a video on that 
deck once I've kind of got it tinkered out. I don't know. Not 100% sure what my future holds. Might be getting a new job. Schedule might be completely uprooted. Don't know. Keep you guys informed. Thank you so much for watching. May the cards rise to meet you and bring a good RNG to your enemies' enemies.